Hey, what's up, DCS crew? We're back at it today with a review from Concept Knives. Now, uh, Concept is a company that um, I've actually dealt with quite a bit. Uh, last year, uh, Eric and I actually, you know, met up with them at SHOT Show. Even before that, I had been communicating with them uh, since they came from a another company, which will not be named in this review because I think it's been talked about enough uh, during, you know, other videos from other, you know, YouTubers. And I think I've maybe touched up on it maybe once or twice. But in any case, um, it seems that somebody from Concept may actually live in the States pretty close to me. In fact, I'm pretty sure they're in my zip code because when I got my package, the package actually had the same city, state, and zip code as I'm in. So, I don't know if maybe they're, they they have an, uh, a mail forwarder or something, but Concept went ahead and they sent me this particular knife. And this is uh, the Pelican EDC. I believe this is the mini version. Uh, it's a three inch blade from, um, it says model number K1018A4. It's a black coated S35VN blade. Uh, it's a titanium handle that's 6ALV, uh, 6AL4V which is the grade of titanium and it's the designer's name. And I apologize, I butchered this many a time. It's K Maxrum, uh, for my own understanding. Um, we'll go ahead and check out this knife in a moment. Uh, in the meantime, let me go ahead and let those credits roll uh, in, out the intro. So uh, stay tuned. After the intro, we'll talk about the knife. <laughs> DCS crew. So I don't want to keep you guys waiting. Thank you for going ahead and allowing me to just go ahead and play that intro out. Um, and so we'll go ahead to the nitty gritty. First, you open up the box from Concept and it has this little package right here, which is an awesome little setup. It has the Concept insignia on there. It's something that kind of opens and closes in that manner. You take those. Once you open that up, you get the knife itself. And the knife in question is this guy right here. This is the Pelican from, like I mentioned, K-Max from Designs. Um, I'm only saying that because I don't know how to properly pronounce his name. I feel really bad because it's one of those where I'm sure it's actually a very easy you know, pronunciation. Once you hear it once, you don't forget it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm at a loss for how to say it. So I'm just calling it K-Max from Design. Now, um, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and I'm gonna tell you that this particular knife, okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and give it the nice little 360 treatment here. This knife is probably the coolest knife that I have seen from uh, Concept so far. And that's saying a lot because I liked a lot of their, uh, their designs. There's the Exhibitor. Um, there's uh, the Dirk Pinkerton design that's coming up. Uh, it's a small knife, but it's it's a really cool looking knife nonetheless. Um, I know that Matt Degnan is is going to be doing something with them, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there is uh, the Cryo and the Mini Cryo. They do have the uh, the standard and like the upgraded version, so they have my Carter and they have titanium for that now. But this one just kind of it, it hits different, if you will, because okay, check this out, guys. All right, so first and foremost it does have the thumb stud uh, that's used to go ahead and flip it and it runs off of bearings. So the action on this is actually really, really smooth. Okay, especially considering that it's a, a black coated blade. All right, so you've got that. Now I did look at the grind. The grind looks pretty decent. Um, it's, it's actually not so bad. And I love the way that this blade is designed because it allows you to get a nice belly all the way, nice and consistent, all the way to the tip, which is, it's not thin and it's not robust. It's right there in the middle. The grind is pretty aggressively high. It's just, it stops just short of, of the flats right here, right before you get to this kind of like uh, this wave or this scallop right here to be able to rest your thumb on. And this, it, it feels, it looks deceptively small, but it feels great in the hand. You have your index finger you place right here, your middle, your ring, and your pinky finger here, and you can go ahead and either place your thumb here, or you can kind of choke up a little bit, and you can actually place your thumb right up here while giving your index finger enough space to be able to go ahead and have space, you know, to protect it from the actual blade itself here. Um, there is some space, you know, for the sharpening choil between that and where the blade actually um, thins out. So it allows you to be able to use systems like the, uh, the KME, 
Um, you do have the titanium scales, which under normal circumstances would be pretty slick. These are stone washed, or in this case, they're they're blackened, and then they're black washed. It's kind of like the. Uh, let me see, do I have it here? Yeah, it's kind of like uh, on this particular knife, this is the bare knuckle. And as you can see, the blade itself, it has that kind of blackened look to it. And it has, uh, it's what, what they like to call a black wash. I really love that about uh, Kershaw. And that's something that I think was mimicked very well on titanium. And if you know anything about titanium, titanium is very difficult not only to mill, but to kind of work with. So to have this kind of finish, um, they, they did want to go ahead and pull out all the stops on this particular knife. Now, you have this clip, and this clip actually threw me off a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and show that to you right here. Okay. This clip... Um, it's only tapped for right hand carry, by the way. Sorry, left hand guys, even though it does have a lanyard hold, but we'll get to that. Um, it actually has, it's uh, two screws that hold it. And then it actually goes down just like this. And it kind of gives you that kind of like waviness. And then it stops just short of the, uh, the lock bar, uh, the, the frame lock right here. It actually doesn't sit on the frame lock at all. And if I can show that to you this way. Actually, do I have my Olight with me? Yeah, I do. There we go, all right. You should be able to see it right there. You can see how it sits. It actually sits more on the frame itself than the actual lock, so that when you hold it, you can hold it and you can put all the pressure you want and it's still gonna open up very nice and easy. I really like that about this particular knife. Now, moving on. <clears throat> I'm gonna place this down here while I go ahead and put my Olight away and uh, talk a little bit more about the knife. Now, um, there are different versions of this knife. I guess they sent this variant to me because, um, you know, I'm, I don't know, I guess they picked it out at random, but this is actually a really nice variant and I'm really digging this version of the knife. Um, yeah, I, I, I gotta say, it just, it feels good in the hand. Um, there, there would be one or two things that I would fix about it, but the truth is, you know, there, there's a lot of things that I've learned about this knife while carrying it that really likes, it makes me like it that much more. As an example, all of the screws, with the exception of the uh, the pocket screw, the, the pocket clip screws, okay, and uh, the the frame lock, I guess the, the lock bar insert right here, the the frame lock insert, everything else is T8. Okay, that is huge. That is huge because you get all of these very soft metals that are listed, you know, uh, that that are that are used for making these particular screws, especially like T6. You get something really, really small and skinny like T6. Look at this. This thing is almost stripped because of the amount of times I've had to kind of work those T6 screws. I like T8. T8 is a little bit thicker. You know, it allows me to be able to do more with it. And uh, it's, easy to, it's easier to work with, you know, to be able to go and disassemble and maintain and do all of that, which is great. Um, this, like I said, it runs off of bearings and it's very nice and smooth. Uh, it did not come with Loctite on the pivot. So you will notice that when you get it, if you have not taken it apart and used something, you know, any thread locker like uh, this stuff right here, which is what I use. I use Permatex, which is essentially, you know, repackaged uh, Loctite liquid, uh, the blue thread locker. Um, if you don't go ahead and you put that into the pivot, you're gonna find once you've used it a couple of times, you're gonna create some side to side play. Okay, you, you don't have any uh, vertical, but you will have uh, horizontal blade play. And the reason being is because it's starting to loosen up the pivot after a while, and then you'll see the blade start to kind of migrate to the show side. In fact, I think that it's starting to do that already, as you can see here, okay? There's nothing wrong with that because I, I, I didn't put Loctite on this on purpose. I am gonna take it in part one day and go ahead and show you the insides, but for the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fix it really quick. All right, and I'm glad that that happened during the video because then you actually get to see what it is uh, that it ha and, and how it actually flicks open and the action once it has been uh, fully centered once again. As you can see, it's nice and centered, flicks open, drops shut so, so nicely. So um, one thing that I actually noticed about this knife and people probably haven't really talked about it. Um, I wish that there was jimping here you know, because not only would I be able to go ahead and have some jimping, like a little platform with some jimping since this is raised, which is cool since it's raised, it allows you to be able to kind of nudge the uh, the thumb stud right here so that when you open it, you can either open it slow, you can open it quickly, 
and you'll have the uh, the jimping right here. It doesn't have jimping, and that sucks because you you know once it's opened, you don't have anything other than that ledge to be able to go ahead and, and secure your thumb on. But the cool thing about this is if you had some jimping here, you'd be able to you know flick it open a lot easier. I actually noticed that this little ledge here, if you work it right, you should be able to front flip it like you just saw. Try one more time. Yeah. There we go. All right, and it is um, the lockup is nice. Even with that that weak front uh, front flip, you do get some nice lockup there. Let me go ahead and show you the lockup when you actually work with it normally. And uh, let me go ahead and put some other knives here on the table so you can see how big it is in comparison to some other you know uh, standardized EDC uh, knives. Um, first off, we have the Spyderco Pair Three. You can see they're about the same size, <clears throat> which I figured as much. Uh, you have the CGRB Centros. It is a little bit bigger than the uh, the Pelican. You have the Kershaw Dividend. I'll go ahead and place that right here. It's another office-sized knife, four-inch, you know, handle, three-inch blade. So it does fit, you know, pretty much within the parameters of that particular knife. And uh, let's see here. You have the Protec SBR, the Les George design. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit smaller than the Pelican. So there you go. Now, as far as specs are concerned, you can find the specs for this particular knife. And I'll go ahead and just put it that way. You can put it on that side uh, so you can go ahead and see it in the meantime. And I'll talk a little bit about it. Um, you see these little scallops that are inside the titanium handle. It kind of reminds me of the Kaiser Rogue. And uh, I think I have it by here. Oh, God damn it, where the hell did it? There we go. I knew I had it nearby. It has scallops kind of like the Kaiser Rogue, as you can see here. All right, in fact, it's pretty close. So it's nice to see that kind of machining that goes into play. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more, but then again, they probably don't want to bite the design uh, off of uh, off of Kaiser, even though, um, you know, it's Dirk's design and he is uh, designing for Concept Knives as well. But in any case, um, <clears throat> you do have that. So it does give a little bit of a, uh, I don't know, just an aesthetic. Uh, it gives a nice little look to it. It feels good in the hand, and just with the placement of the pocket clip, it allows you to be able to hold it in your hand and not feel the hot spot back there. You do have some jimping back here, so that when it is in the meat of, in your hand, it, it is actually nice. And uh, yeah, let me go ahead and just show you this. Uh, you can actually see the contact of the uh, the jimping that's that's back here inside of my hand. Okay. Um, <clears throat> there are a few variants of this, but all of the variants will have titanium handles and these particular handles have been skeletonized. And I know that, and I will show you by doing so. All right, let's see if we can do this here. Okay, turn on my O light. And there you go. You have skeletonization at the bottom and towards the top on the show side. And on the clip side, you have a small pocket right there and a small pocket back there as well as a small pocket that is in the back on the frame lock side. So you do have some savings as far as weight is concerned. And the truth is, uh, even, I mean, as it is, I don't think that it would be that huge of a deal because this isn't a very uh, uh, heavy knife. This is actually a pretty nice size knife uh, for everyday, you know, use. And I think that, you know, with the, with as light as it is, you can probably get away with it wearing it in khakis or something like that. Um, nice little knife. You, because of the fact it has thumb studs, it is very, very easy to uh, to deploy and to be able to kind of like fidget with. I find myself doing that all the time. In fact, if you look at my my thumb, you'll notice that I've been I've been using it for a little while because uh, yeah, when when you use thumb studs on a knife. Typically you have those fun little calluses. Those are fun calluses, guys. Those are fun calluses. It lets you know that you love your knives because you've been flicking the hell out of them. And in stage two of that is when you have hard enough calluses that it starts to take the plate and flake it off of the thumb studs themselves. But, you know, I don't really need to do that. So um, all I do is I, I just flick it around all day and it works just fantastic. Once I've used this for a little while, I am gonna go ahead and, like I said, uh, take it apart and go ahead and do a nice little deep cleaning and see what it looks like inside. It is running off of bearings. You can clearly tell from the action. Um, I have not lubed this. This is just, it's straight out of the box. I took it out, put it in my pocket, wore it, wore it a little bit, 
and I uh, figured I'd talk a little bit about it now that I've had the chance to go ahead and carry it for a couple of days, okay? So you have this kind of um, this black washed titanium and then what they've done is they've coated the titanium uh, backspacer, which is from here on down, in black, okay? Just like the black blade and the black hardware, thumb studs, you know, pivots, uh, you know, the clip, that sort of thing. Now, this is paint, uh, it's not black anodized, so you are gonna see some chipping eventually. That's one Achilles heel that I see with this. Uh, another is the fact that it's not tapped for left-hand carry, even though it is a frame lock. There are some people who like to carry it on the left-hand side. On the weak side, you know, they'll take it out, snap it, you know, scrub the cat, do whatever, you know, like that guy from the Instagram videos. What a fucking idiot. But in any case, um, if for whatever reason you don't feel like carrying it with a clip, they do have the, uh, the lanyard hole. It is a nice sizable lanyard hole, so you can put whatever you choose uh, to, to use for. You can probably put some, some 550 paracord in there <clears throat> and create a nice uh, uh, method of deployment. Say you're out you know, camping or you have gloves on, so you can't really you know, fiddle with it. You'll end up fumbling for it and end up accidentally maybe opening it. That way you can kind of just kind of grab it from the bottom, take it out and just flick it open. Um, the space between the uh, the frame itself and the thumb stud is actually ample enough to be able to get perfect positioning, to be able to get a perfect flick every time. I don't believe I have intentionally misfired this. If it was accidental, it was purely on me. Uh, you know, it was probably me just not looking, but as you can see, it's just every freaking time. You know, I mean, even finger flicking it with my index finger. The detent on this is excellent, and the action just to shut it is excellent. Even compared to knives that have like a satin or even a stone wash finish on the blade, typically when you coat a blade, it coats that area that the uh, that you know the um, the bearings touch, and it creates an issue with the track. And, it'll, and it almost feels like gritty when it's opening and closing. This does not, and I, like I said, I, I hate having to say this because I've seen some really nice knives from uh, Concept. I think that this is their best knife that I have checked out to date. Um, again, like I said, I'm probably gonna check out the Dirk Pinkerton model. There might be some other ones that come along the way. Uh, this one was randomly sent to me to go ahead and check out, and I'm so glad that they sent this to me because I am very, very impressed with this knife. I don't know how much it is. Uh, I haven't checked, but um, based on the specs, based on the usage, this is my first introduction to this kind of knife and style by the designer, which is, um, like I said, K-Max from Designs. So you can actually see his information right there. And then on the other side, you have Concept, which they've actually uh, just left it with that kind of like X looking K, which is Concept. And then you have the model number and the blade steel designation right there. This is model number K1018A4 and uh, US made S35EN steel. Guys, you owe it to yourself to check this knife out. This thing is freaking awesome. And I hope that they come out with the uh, a budget version. <clears throat> I will implore uh, Concept to come out with a budget version of this. <clears throat> this could be one of their best selling knives. I believe that there's a larger version, um, and that's why I said it was the Concept Mini uh, Pelican. It doesn't really say that on their uh, box. Uh, if you look at it right up here, it actually just says Pelican EDC. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I'm, I want to say that they have a bigger version of this. I could be wrong, you know, and, and it could not be the case. But the truth is, guys, you owe it to yourself to go ahead and check this out. I'm actually pretty psyched. This is probably the best knife I have been able to uh, check out to date um, from Concept. And probably one of my top five knives so far this year. I mean, granted, it's only January. But I got a feeling this is one that's going to stay in rotation for a while. Um, yeah. So that being said, thank you so much for watching. This is the Pelican from uh, Concept Knives, not to be confused with the Pelican from Kaiser. It is the same designer, not the same knife. I think that this is a better knife. That's just me. Um, K Maxrum, I guess his name is. <laughs> I'm so sorry if I have butchered your info. Um, I'm going to probably message you and tell you how much I like this knife. <laughs> so don't be surprised if you end up seeing this video and you see this shout out at the end. Uh, but just remember guys, whether it's this, whether it's the cryo, the mini cryo, you know, whether you choose to get a Kaiser, whether you get, you know, an American knife like the Kershaw bare knuckle, just remember guys, if you EDC, think of DCS.
Guys, it's Cardinal signing off. This is the Concept Pelican from K-Max Room. This is going in my pocket and I am out of here. So take it easy. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up at Daily Carry Solutions on my Instagram. Sound off below in the comments or email me at dailycarrysolutions at gmail.com. Take it easy, guys. Peace.